you can see Aja up here filming and there's a couple warning signs up here. Smuggling and illegal immigration may be encountered in this area. And then there's a visitor information update, so we'll see what Aja has to say. Were you just checking to make sure it was okay to be here? Yeah, I just read the signs real quick because um, smuggling and illegal immigration. Yeah, you know. I'm sure it'll be fine, plus there's other people here. Yeah, all right. Good spot, and that sun is setting over the mountains. It's really pretty. Oh, it was a paved road. Oh yeah, it was a paved road at one time. We just found heaven. Yeah, this I, is beautiful. And what are we like? 25 miles away from where um, the other little town was. Gila Bend? Yeah. Yeah. About tw yeah, about that far. Absolutely gorgeous, you guys. I'm going to jump out. We've got a sunset going d down right now. And is this <laughs> the Sonora get... Forest or something Sonora like that? Sonora Forest. I will put a little link down below of where we're at because this is absolutely gorgeous. Um, maybe a little sketchy with some smuggling going on. I don't know, but it's okay. We're only going to be here, I think, one day. So, anyways, I'm going to turn the camera around and show you guys the sunset. We'll see you guys later. It's awesome here. Yeah. See you guys tomorrow. I'm gonna show you guys what he just did. Another nut. I'm gonna show him. <laughs> I'll be walking. Okay. Where, where are we at? The Sonoran Desert National Monument. And basically, it's just, uh, I don't know if it's BLM land. Somebody said it was, but I'm not real sure about that. Um, it's beautiful out here. I have to tell you that right now, but it's really cold. Aja's out taking just a really quick walk because we're getting ready to leave. She's just doing a little bit of filming of the cacti out there. Um, there's this cacti everywhere. I've never seen so many cacti. Yeah, it's good to see that they're around. Yeah, and they're they're yeah. huge. But anyways, we we got here last night and we went we did our thing and went to bed. It was uh, we got here at dusk. Yeah, dusk. Enough setting. to get the sunset. Yeah. yeah really beautiful and we didn't get to go out and walk around today it just got way too cold out what's the temperature do you remember uh, it says 59. 59 and we're winding about 59 but it's windy it's really windy yeah. too that's the thing about out here in the desert is that you know in some places it can get down to 59 and it's fine but then you put in the wind chill factor and it's a whole nother ball game and the dirt and the dust yeah so uh, like I just said, Aja's doing her thing. We're getting ready to get on the road, and hopefully we'll make it to Tucson today. And I, I think that's yeah. our plan. Yeah. So we'll show you guys along the way. Let's go. Going east. Going east.
Tucson, Arizona at the Desert Diamond Casino. And as you can see, they allow for uh, a few nights of parking here overnight. In fact, they even have a shuttle that'll come and get you to take you in to the casino. We went in there last night and uh, had their Wednesday buffet. And how it, what it ended up being was two people, it was buy one, get one free. And then Aja had a coupon for $10 off. And uh, so did Russ. So it ended up costing us each $3.25 for a meal. And it wasn't too bad at all. So uh, you can see today is a little nicer, uh, definitely cold, but clear. I got the panel out, charging everything up. And uh, check this out, I got out this morning and had a look before the semi was here. And if you look way back in the distance there, through the tree, <laughs> which didn't have to be there, I'll walk over this way. I got snow up on the mountains today. So obviously that's at quite a bit of uh, elevation. Straight in this direction back here is uh, part of the airport. And this morning they had their the back of the jets pointing this way and they were taking off straight to the, uh, I don't know what you call that, the east, let's say. And it is so loud, it rumbled my whole rig. And I think I want to say they took off like 12 of these jets. It was incredible. It was loud. <laughs> and that's the only thing about this place. Other than that, it works out pretty nice. Now I think you can see the mountains over there a little better. And so we are here with Aja and Mr. Russ is sitting over there all, all bundled up. See Mr. Russ over there. And, and today is gonna be uh, Russ's last day with us. So Russ is gonna be staying in Benson for a few days. He's gonna go into Tombstone and uh, check it out there. And we might make it that way and we're gonna cruise to Benson too also. So before we depart, one, Russ has already, you've met him before. There's our buddy Russ. And uh, I want to ask you a question. Yes. Have you enjoyed yourself traveling with us? Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't buy it. I wouldn't buy it for a minute or Why anything not? like that. Why not? No, no actually so, I have. Have you? Yes. Right on. It's been lots of fun having you around and everything. Okay, I'm going to take a few minutes here and talk with Mr. Russ and uh, just find out what kind of challenges he's faced uh, being uh, in a wheelchair. Not that he, he can get around in his walker and stuff like that, but it is a bit challenging, isn't it? So, so I'm going to point the camera at you right. <laughs> um, and, and tell us what, um, what kind of uh, struggles have you had with, with what you've been doing? Well, the challenges that I've had, uh, a lot of campgrounds and stuff uh, don't have concrete pads. They have gravel, small gravel, large gravel. The small gravel in the wheelchair, it is doable to get around on, but when you get into the larger rocks or gravel, uh, basically a chair just sinks right into it and you can't get around uh, but other than that it is doable uh, I would say don't let any don't let it get in your way of exploring the United States and going out and doing this because it's been a lot of fun so far I've been doing it living basically in my coach since the end of May of last year so that's quite a while and I did do my first dry camping with you all starting on the 10th of January and it's been a blast and has really allowed me to see so much more. And, and you're a member, you got a membership to Thousand Trails or something like that? Yes, I went from a zone pass, I became an elite member so therefore I can be in Thousand Trails parks in the five different zones that they offer up to 21 days and I can go park to park to park if need be versus the zone pass that you're only allowed 14 days in and then you have to be out of network for seven and then I added to that the trails collection for another $200 and that gave me another 109 parks that I can go to up to 14 days at a time and that's what you're going to go do is stay at one of the parks for the next few days and that's and after Benson, today we'll be separated yeah. and everything like right. that so in your opinion you would you would tell other people that would have a, a disability i guess we'll say it that get the heck out there and give it a shot right absolutely absolutely don't don't limit yourself because there's so much to see and a lot of it is accessible a lot you know especially your national parks and everything like that you can definitely get around it so 
it's it's worth it you know and that's one thing that terry likes to do is when we go to uh a lot of these other parks we like to walk around and find um the uh the approach and stuff like that for somebody that's in a wheelchair or whatever and uh, we've noticed a lot of them are gravel we have seen some that are concrete and um paths and stuff like that so we try to show that so you know at the same time yeah get out there give it a shot what's the worst i mean the worst thing you could do is stay in your rig because it's pouring down rain right. or cold what you got to do anyhow, <laughs> yeah, exactly <so. laughs> exactly but yes yeah, so that's one thing with your videos that um that i uh enjoyed before we met up was the fact that you all would say about the accessibility of certain locations that you go to and i found that very helpful well, awesome, awesome. So we hadn't, in fact, that. we had never even talked about that. I didn't think of, you know, we didn't discuss that you had uh, watched us doing that. Yes, so, so. That, that was a big help. Too. Oh, good. And you're going to continue to watch us, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I didn't run you away, huh? No, no. And I hopefully didn't run you guys <laughs> no, away. No, so. no. <laughs> we got, as it is, it's going to be, what, 19 tonight? And uh, we are going to be up in elevation, so we're heading east uh, yeah, slowly to get warm. Right, yeah. Because. Yeah. Last night was a bit chilly. I noticed at four o'clock last night, it got pretty daggone cold. I know my heat was kicking on like every <laughs> two minutes it would come on to warm it back up. So. Well, we survived and we'll live to see another day then. Absolutely. Well, I, I want to thank you so much for uh, letting us videotape you and stuff. I'm realizing this camera's doing a circle. <laughs> I was turning around and bouncing it all over the place. <laughs> So as you can see, uh, I'm not all that good at hanging under the camera. Anyways, I want to thank Russ again for uh, traveling with us and spending a few moments, you know, telling about his experience as to get out here and do this. And uh, we've been together, what, since January 10th, so a month, and uh, I haven't seen anything slow him down. That's a fact. So if you have a chance, get out, enjoy. You only live once and uh, make, the best of make the best of it. Thanks again, my friend. Until later, everybody, stay safe. Peace out. Suck them up, buttercup. <laughs>